fifth graders. Welcome back to math. For today, you're going to need the same things you needed yesterday, which is your math resource binder and paper and a pencil. So pause if you need to go get those things and then come on back. Today's warm up is for you to build off of your mental multiplication. So you should be solving this mentally. And once you've solved it, come on back and see how you did. <clears throat> so fifth graders, we're using 99 is close to 100. So we should have done 22 times 100. Remember, we're just adding two zeros, so 2,200. But this is 122 too many. So we need to subtract 22 to find our answer. And we should have gotten 2,178. How'd we do? Hopefully that worked for you. Fifth graders, our objective is much like yesterday's objective. We're going to be introducing more mental math multiplication strategies. So building off of what we did yesterday, and I think you guys probably saw this coming, we did three of our five yesterday. So we're going to learn two more of our five. So again, following along or taking notes, depending on what I sent to you guys. I know, I know, I should know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I failed. I'm not perfect. I know you guys all thought that I was perfect. I hate to hate to burst your bubble. I'm super not. So we're going to do two more strategies today. Actually, the last one is my favorite strategy. I love this one. It feels sort of like I'm on some kind of like a mystery hunt when I do the last one. So we'll do number four. And then we'll do number five, and those will be the five mental math strategies for multiplication that we're using. So strategy four is called save one group for last. So what does that mean? Let's say we're multiplying 38 times 41. This is another way of saying we're looking at how many 41 38s is. We have practiced how to find 40 38s using a combination of our other strategies, and we can save one group for less. So if we're looking for 41 38s, let's figure out what 40 is and then add one of them back at the end, okay? Now, this is a combination of a whole bunch of our different multiplication strategies. We're gonna save 10 for the end. We're also gonna break the problem up, okay? So remember, we're not doing 38 times 4. We're going to do 30 times 4, which is 120, plus 8 times 4, which is 32. Then we multiply by 10, and then we add our 38. 120 plus 32 is 152. Remember, when we're multiplying by 10, all we do is add a 0. And now we add 38, which actually we can add 38 in our heads too, right? Remember if we're just going place value by place value. So our ones, we add our zero and our eight, which is eight. We add our three and our two tens, which is five tens. And our hundreds and thousands stay the same. I think you guys should be amazed that we just like rocked out three different mental, mental multiplication strategies at once. We broke up the problem here. We saved 10 for last and we also saved one group for last. Nice job, fifth graders. So let's do just a couple problems with this because it is a little bit longer. But let's try, I don't know, 42 times 21. So this is a strategy that's going to work if you're multiplying by something that has a one at the end, right? So really what we're going to do is save one group for last. So we're doing 42 times 20 plus we have to do one more 42. So we're going to add one more 42 back, okay? Remember though, we're also gonna save 10 for last. We're also gonna break up the problem. Although I think if you think it out, you could probably do 42 times two in your head. Cause you know what four times two is and you know what two times two is. And so putting that together, we can double it pretty quickly. We're doubling 42. So two times two is four, two times four is eight. So we've already done this part. Remember, if we multiply by 10, all we're doing is adding a zero. Then we add 42. Go place value at a time. Two plus zero is two. 
4 plus 0 is 8, 882. It was pretty slick. We kind of have to keep track of all the moving parts, but it totally works pretty quickly, I think. Let's try another one. Let's try 23 times hmm, 31. So remember, we're going to do 23 times 30 and then save one for last. And by save one, I mean save one 23. So we are adding on that 23 at the end. Okay. Now remember, we're breaking this into its parts, saving 10 for last. Thinking in our heads, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. So we get 69. 69 times 10 is 0 plus 23. This is a little bit trickier because you have to do a little bit of regrouping in your head, but I think you can do it. So we start with 3 plus 0 is 3. 2 plus 9 is 11, so we kind of have to keep track of that one extra. 713. So I know this one is complicated because it's involving like really three different mental multiplication strategies. Actually, and if we're adding and one mental addition strategy, so you're using four mental math strategies, which is kind of incredible, fifth graders. You should be proud of what you're able to do. All right, I call this one find four times 25 because what do you notice about four times 25? Four times 25 is 100. And so if you can find four times 25, that means you're multiplying by 100. Okay, so let's look at one example, 24 times 25. Fifth graders, this continues to use our, um, excuse me, this continues to use our distributive property or our commutative property. So we want to think about 24. Can we break this into factors where we're doing 4 times 25? So if I'm breaking this into factor pairs, 4 times what is 24? 4 times 6 is 24. Now we're doing 6 times 100, right? Because 4 times 25 is 100, and we can multiply in any order. 6 times 100 is 600. So now you can kind of see, fifth graders, this strategy isn't going to work every single time, and that's true for all of our strategies. This is only a strategy that will work if one of the factors can be broken into four times something, and also if you have a 25 here, okay? So we're trying to get to something times four times 25. So what times four will get us 36? Nine times four. So now we have nine times 100, which is 900. I'm gonna give you a little hint. Finding 4 times 25, you could also find 2 times 50 for the same reason. So let's do a couple of examples of our find 4 times 25. So let's say for problem 1, let's do 28 times 25. If you feel ready, I would pause and give it a go. But if not, we'll try it together. So remember, the goal is always to get something times 4 times 25. So we want to focus here. What times 4 will get us 28? That's right, 7. Now we know that 4 times 25 is 100. 7 times 100 is 700. If you haven't paused yet, go ahead and try to pause this one. Let's do 48 times, that's an eight, I know it doesn't look like it, 48 times 25. So pause and try it. Remember the goal is always four times 25. So what times four is 48? And you should have found 12. Four times 25 is 100. So 12 times 100, we add those two zeros to get 1,200. Let's try just one that's times 50. So remember, in this case, we're not going to find 4 times 50. We want to find 2 times 50 because that's what's going to get us 100. So looking here, what times 2 is 16? And you should find 8. 8 times 100 is 800. 
All right, fifth graders, just like yesterday, <clears throat> you're going to have practice attached that I've made. You're going to work on that and see how you did. Again, try to correct your own mistakes. After you've done that, the homework is also going to be attached. We're going to continue actually practicing these strategies again tomorrow, or I guess it's not tomorrow, next week, um, all five of them. So practice the two that we worked on today, and then we'll come back next week and keep working on these strategies. Good luck.